All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to use the second derivative test to identify all relative extrema for the function f of x equals x minus 7 quantity squared. And so the first thing you do when you start your second derivative test is to take the first derivative of your function and find your critical values. And you're going to use those critical values to plug into your second derivative to test to see if the second derivative at those points is positive or negative. And that's going to allow you to determine if that critical value is a relative minimum or a relative maximum. And so let's start by taking the first derivative of our function and then we'll set it equal to zero. So f prime of x is going to be equal to the derivative of this function. And I think the easiest way to go about this is to use the chain rule to take our derivative here. And so we'll take the derivative of our outside function first. So we're gonna have two times x minus seven. And then we're subtracting one from our exponent. So we're just left with an exponent of one. And then we're gonna multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is just going to be one, right? The derivative of x is one and the derivative of negative seven is zero. So we just have one plus zero. So we're just multiplying by one. So then if we simplify our first derivative, we'll have two times x minus seven. And so then if we set this equal to zero, it's already in factored form, which is really nice. So we can just set x minus seven equal to zero and find that x is going to be equal to seven. And this is our critical value for this function, right? This is the point where the slope or the first derivative is equal to zero. And so now we'll find the second derivative and we'll plug this value in to see if this is a relative minimum or a relative maximum. And so let's take the second derivative. So we'll have f double prime of x, and that's gonna be equal to the derivative of two times x minus seven, which is actually, I'm just gonna rewrite this, f prime of x is also equal to two x minus 14. Hopefully you can see that, right? If we just multiply two into this quantity, we get this function right here. So we're just gonna add the derivative of 2x, which is just two, so our second derivative is equal to two, and then the derivative of negative 14 is just zero. So we have two plus zero, and so our second derivative is just equal to two. So if we plug seven in, if we take our second derivative and plug seven in, we're just going to get two back out, right? No matter what value you plug into your second derivative here, you're gonna get two. And so two is a positive value for our second derivative. And so that means that we're going to have a relative minimum at the point of x equals seven, right? If the value of your second derivative at that point is positive, you're going to have a relative minimum. If it's negative, you're going to have a relative maximum. And so that means that at x equals seven, we're going to have a relative minimum. But let's find the whole coordinate point by plugging our value of x into our original function to get that y coordinate. So if we plug seven into this function, we'll have seven minus seven, which is zero and then zero squared. And so our y value or the y coordinate for our function is just zero. So that means that our point is seven comma zero and that is going to be our relative minimum. And so that is the final answer to this problem. We found the one relative extrema for this function using the second derivative test. Let's look at another example. So here we wanna use the second derivative test to identify the relative extrema of g of x equals negative two x cubed plus 12 x squared plus two. And so let's start by taking the first derivative. We'll have g prime of x is equal to negative six x squared, and then we'll have plus 24 x, and then the derivative of two is zero, so we don't need to write that. But the rest of these terms came from using the power rule on these terms in our original function. So then we'll set our derivative equal to zero, and solve for our critical values, we'll have negative six x squared plus 24 x. And I see a common factor of negative six x in these two terms. So I'll pull that out and we'll have that zero is equal to negative six x times x minus four, right? Because if you take negative six x out of this, all you're left with is just one x. And if you divide 24 x by negative six x, you're left with just negative four, right? That x was taken out and 24 divided by negative six is negative four. And so now we can set each one of these quantities equal to zero. So we'll have negative six x equals zero and x minus four equals zero, which tells us that x equals zero and x equals four. So we have two critical values here, x equals zero and x equals four for our function. And so these are going to be potential points where we might have relative extrema. And so now let's find our second derivative and then we'll plug these values in to see if they are relative min or relative maximums. So if we take the second derivative, we'll have g double prime of x and that's gonna be equal to two times negative six, so we'll have negative 12x, and then a derivative of 24x, which is just gonna be 24. 
And so now we'll plug our critical values into our second derivative and see what the value is. So I have g double prime of zero to start. We'll start with x equals zero here. And that's gonna be equal to negative 12 times zero, which is just zero plus 24. So we're gonna have positive 24. And that is a positive value for our second derivative, which means that our point x equals zero is going to be a relative minimum, right? If it's positive, it's relative minimum. If it's negative, it's a relative maximum. But let's plug in x equals four and see what that's going to be. We'll have g double prime of four, and that's gonna be equal to negative 12 times four plus 24. And that's gonna be equal to negative 48 plus 24, which will be equal to negative 24. And so I'll just clean this up and write negative 24. And so since this value is negative, that means that x equals four is going to be a relative max for this function. And so now we know both of our relative extrema for this function. We know that x equals zero is going to be a relative minimum. And so let's start writing out our coordinate point, but we need that y value. So let's plug zero into our original function. And this first term will be zero because zero times anything is zero. And then this will be zero and we'll just be left with two. So that means the y value is two. And so this is our point where we have a relative minimum. But then how about x equals four? I'll actually go through and plug that into our original function since that's gonna be a little more involved than plugging in zero. So g of four is gonna be equal to negative two times four cubed plus 12 times four squared plus two. And so four cubed is 64 and 64 times negative two is gonna be negative 128. So I'm actually gonna write that negative 128, and then four squared is 16, and 16 times 12 is 192. So I'll write plus 192, and then we have plus two on the end there. And so negative 128 plus 192 is going to be positive 64, and then 64 plus two is 66. So this is equal to 66, which means that our other point here is four comma 66, and that is our relative max because our second derivative at that point was negative. And so that is the final answer to this problem. We found both of our relative extrema for this function using the second derivative test. Next, we wanna use the second derivative test to identify all the relative extrema for this function. We have f of x equals x to the four fifths power minus five. And so let's start by taking the first derivative of this function. So I have f prime of x is going to be equal to four fifths x, and then four fifths minus one is going to be negative one fifth. And then of course the derivative of negative five is just zero, so we don't need to write that. And so now let's try to solve for any critical values of our function by setting this derivative equal to zero. So I have zero is equal to four divided by five times x to the one fifth power. If I move that variable with a negative exponent to the denominator. And so what you're gonna find here is that there's gonna be no value of x that's going to make this equation true right? Four divided by anything is going to be something. It's never going to be zero. And so because of that, we can't find any critical values from this first derivative. But do notice that this first derivative here is not going to be continuous at a particular point, right? If we set the denominator equal to zero, we have five X to the one fifth power equal to zero. The only value of X that's going to make this true is X equals zero. And so the derivative is not defined at X equals zero, which means it's not continuous at X equals zero, which means that our original function is not differentiable at that point X equals zero. And that's important because critical values are not only the values where your function has a slope of zero, they are also the points where your function is not differentiable. And so, this is actually our critical value for this function, just one at x equals zero. And so now we can continue on with our second derivative test by taking the second derivative of our function and plugging in our value of x equals zero. And so let's find our second derivative. F double prime of x is going to be equal to negative one fifth times four fifths. So that's gonna be negative four 20 fifths times x and then subtract one from negative one fifth. So that's gonna be negative six fifths. And then we can actually rewrite this to be negative four divided by 25 x to the six fifths power, right? We just move this variable with a negative exponent to the denominator so that it is positive. And so this is our second derivative. And so if we plug zero into this, right, f double prime of zero, that's going to tell us whether we have a relative min or a relative max. And if we do that, we'll get the following. And this is going to be a problem because zero to the six fifth power is just going to be zero. 
and zero times 25 is zero, which means we have zero in the denominator. And so this is an undefined value. And so in this case, our second derivative test is going to fail. This isn't going to tell us anything because it's an undefined value. And so what we see here is that the second derivative test can't be used when the second derivative does not exist at our critical point. And so what we have to do now is go back to the first derivative test to be able to find our relative extrema. So even though it says use the second derivative test, if you find that it's not applicable, if it doesn't work, the test fails, you have to revert back to the first derivative test to determine if x equals zero or whatever critical value you have is a relative minimum or maximum. And so since we already know our critical value, we can move right into our first derivative test by drawing our number line, and we can see what intervals we're gonna be interested in to test in this case. And so I see that our intervals are gonna be from negative infinity to zero, and then from zero to positive infinity. And if you're not familiar with the first derivative test, I do recommend that you watch my lesson video on that topic that I will have linked here for you to click on. But our two intervals will be from negative infinity to zero, and then from zero to infinity. And so now we're gonna test a value between these endpoints on our first derivative and see if it is positive or negative to help us determine where the function is increasing or decreasing which is going to tell us whether we have a relative minimum or relative maximum. And so if I choose a value between these two points, I'll pick negative one, we'll have f prime of negative one, and that's going to be equal to negative one to the one fifth power, and negative one times itself five times is negative one, and so the fifth root of negative one is negative one. So we'll have negative one times five, and then four divided by negative five, and so that means we're gonna have negative four fifths. And so that means that we are decreasing on this interval. So I'll write a little negative sign there to indicate that our first interval here is decreasing because our value of the slope is negative. And then if we test a value for our second interval, I'm just gonna plug in positive one. So we'll have f prime of one is equal to one to the one fifth power, which is just one. And then four divided by five times one is just four fifths. So we have positive four fifths, which means that this function is increasing because the slope is positive on that interval. So I'll write plus on our number line. And so what we see is that around our critical value of x equals zero, our function changes from decreasing to increasing. And so that means that since it started out negative, that means that zero is a relative minimum on this function. And so then if we plug zero, into our function here, we're gonna have zero to the four fifths power, which is just zero, and then minus five. So that means that our y value is negative five, which tells us that zero negative five is our relative minimum for this function. And that is the final answer. That is the only relative extrema for this function. We tried to use the second derivative test, it failed. So we moved on to the first derivative test to determine if it was a relative min or relative max. So this is a good example of even though the second derivative test failed, the first derivative test can still pull through for us. Let's look at one more final example. So for our final example, we wanna use the second derivative test again to determine the relative extrema for this function. We have h of x equals x plus 16 divided by x. And so we'll start by finding the first derivative of this function. And before we do that, I'm actually gonna rewrite this function. So we'll have h of x is equal to x plus 16 times x to the negative first power. I just rewrote this rational function like this so that it is easier to see how to take our derivative using the power rule. And so then h prime of x, or our first derivative, is gonna be equal to one plus 16 times negative one times x to the negative two power, right? We subtract one from our exponent. And so if we simplify that, we'll have that this is equal to one minus 16 divided by x squared. And so if we set this derivative equal to zero, we can then solve for our values of x. So if we add this quantity to both sides, we'll have 16 divided by x squared is equal to one. And if we multiply both sides by x squared, we will have that 16 is equal to x squared, which tells us that x is equal to plus or minus four if we were to take the square root of both sides. So in this case, we have two critical values, x equals negative four and x equals positive four. And so now let's find the second derivative and plug these values into it. So we'll have h double prime of x is equal to the derivative of our first derivative, which is one minus 16 times x to the negative second power. So the derivative of one is just zero. So we don't need to write that. And then a derivative of negative 16 times x to the negative second power is going to be negative 16 times negative two times x to the negative third power. Right, we multiplied by our exponent and then we subtracted one from it to get negative three. 
And so this is going to be equal to 32 times x to the negative third power, which is equal to 32 divided by x cubed. And so then let's plug in our critical values into our second derivative and see whether it's positive or negative to determine if we have a relative minimum or maximum. And so h double prime of negative four, we'll start with negative four, is gonna be equal to 32 divided by negative four cubed. Now four cubed is 64, so that means negative four cubed will be negative 64. So this is equal to 32 divided by negative 64, which is equal to negative one half. And so this is negative, this value for our second derivative is negative, which tells us that x equals negative four is going to be a relative maximum. And then let's test positive four. We'll have h double prime of four is equal to 32 divided by four cubed, and that's gonna be equal to 32 divided by 64, this time 64 is positive, so that means this is gonna be equal to positive one half, which means that unlike negative four, x equals four is going to be a relative minimum. And so to find our full point, if we plug negative four into our function here, negative four plus 16 divided by negative four, 16 divided by negative four will be negative four, and so negative four plus negative four will be negative eight. So our relative maximum will be negative four, negative eight, and then for x equals four, if we plug that into our function, we'll have four plus 16 divided by four, and that will be four plus four. So that y value is going to be eight. And so that means that our relative minimum will be four, eight. And so that's the final answer to this problem. We have a relative max at negative four, negative eight, and a relative min at four, eight. Right, so all we did once we determined that negative four and four were relative extrema, we just plugged them into our original function to get their y coordinate. And now we have our full points for our relative extrema. And so that's all the examples I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time.